What's up, After Buzzers? Welcome to this edition of The Voice Of. I have a fun guest today who you maybe have heard him on like this video game. It's called Final Fantasy. I have Ray Chase. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I like how I said that though, too. I have you. <laughs> yes, he's in my clutches, viewers. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Carrie Lane. You can find me online at Carrie D Lane. And we have this epic music going on because I have an epic guest. Welcome, Ray. Welcome, welcome. Hi there. I'm really excited to be here. This is an awesome place. <laughs> Yay. Well, we're excited to have you here. And you've done voices along the way, but we're going to meet. Big thing we're going to talk about today, guys, is Final Fantasy 15. 15. Holy mackerel, they're on 15 by now? Sheesh. Well, they're on Just 15 mainline Final Fantasies because uh, they only number the ones that they're really, really proud of. And oh. then there's still like <laughs> 20 other ones that exist too. So this so, is 35, 36, okay. something like that. Thank yeah, you for yeah. doing the math. I was yeah, like, yeah. It's too early for that. I mean, it's not really early, but you know, math. Is yeah, like... yeah. Now, this is after Buzz TV. We're talking about stuff after it comes out. Uh, well, this one, just the your buzz. game comes out tomorrow. It comes out in seven hours. In 10 hours, PST. But well, it's, it's out in other places, too. Oh, okay. So you can maybe reveal some stuff. I, well, I don't want to do that until, like, well, months no have passed. That's yeah, true. yeah. Okay, yeah. no spoilers, guys. But no we'll dig spoilers. into that. Yeah. Um, well, something people maybe don't know, per se, on, like, your background is, one, you graduated very high honors there, Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> Summa cum laude. Sure. <laughs> do you say it loud? I always, always say it was, like, loud, not loud, eh? Uh, yeah. I don't know. You're like, yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something. Yes. And um, do you think at all that your schooling led to particular training to what you do now at all? Or it helped in a way? I think directly? what school really prepares you for than anything are habits. That's really uh, what I think school is about. It's not about so much that you know how to do trigger mm -hmm. or pre-calc or anything like that. It's that you are diligent and mm. you show up on time and do stuff like that. So I think that... Mm -hmm. is really important for becoming a voice actor. Not necessarily that you're super book smart, but that you have the drive to see a dream through all the way. Um, that that definitely is the, the hardest part about being a voice actor is motivating yourself and, mm. and being, being professional all the time. See kids, stay in school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's a good point. It teaches you the habits that are later applied to any other... Um, Discipline. Yes. Yeah. And I went to USC for acting, and uh, I took voice classes there. Not oh, necessarily okay. voice over nice. classes, but just working with your diaphragm mm -hmm. and breathing correctly and all that sort of stuff. So mm. that, in that way, it prepared me for the job that was to come, for sure. Well, voice acting, having acting training is very important mm -hmm. as well. So. Yes, always. Nice. Now, what came first? Video games, commercials, audio books, on screen? You've done a couple things. You know? uh, yeah, Just yeah. Just a few. <laughs> it, it, it was a long and winding road. Okay. My very, very, very first thing was I was a voice of Coke Zero for a while. Wow. Coke Zero. Enjoy everything. Is that kind of thing. <laughs> I have yeah. that, that weird gravelly sort of young guy voice that they were looking for, and I did that for a, a while, and that got my first agent, and I auditioned, and I failed at everything. And Aww. then I did audiobooks for a while. Okay. And I did 150 of them in a two year Ooh. period. It was insane. All uh, kinds of audiobooks? Yeah, all okay. kinds, including erotica. Okay. I know that's your question. <laughs> yes. Oh, really yes. Well. Um, it, was, uh, it was a long, lonely journey. It was all mm. in, in a booth that I did at home. Uh, and then I used that to sort of stop being a bartender, mm -hmm. which was my day job and focus full-time on becoming a voice actor. And then when I had full-time experience to, to, to get training, mm -hmm. to be casting directors, really focus, then I started booking video game work and only recently animation work. That's really hard to get. Mm. So it's really hard to get. So uh, all over the map for sure. Yeah. And then you started off a little bit with some TV, uh, a couple episodes here and there and some short films as well, right? Way back when. Oh, yeah. Wait, if you found going, my IMDb. I did. You know, that yes. IMDb page scroll all the way so to the bottom. So <laughs> I did uh, a show called Burn Krant 616 mm -hmm. back at USC, which my uh, best friend Logan mm -hmm. made. He uh, wrote, produced, directed the whole thing uh, with, with his friend John. 
And it was a show, it was USC's first ever sitcom that oh, wow. was cre it was created there. And it was about Nazis taking <laughs> over the school. Very clumsy, inefficient, goofy Nazis. I played Nazi number two uh, for uh, two seasons, and that was really, really fun. That was that, that would be my, my first credit. Uh, uh, with, a, with a lot of people, if you look back at that cast, mm. quite a storied cast. Um, uh, some SNL members on there. Yeah, ah, it's not too bad. Go figure. Yeah. Now, what got you, um, kind of a backtrack loop-de-loop -loop here, what got you started with acting and wanting to do that? What was the bug that bit you? Mm. I, the credit has to go to my dad. Um, mm -hmm. He was an accountant, but he had, was a very funny guy. Mm -hmm. And he would tell stories to my sister and I when we were kids um, and come up with these goofy characters, always playing around, Mr. Bones and Mr. Hothead and Sammy mm -hmm. Secret and all these... Uh, these stories that he would make up that were hilarious and he'd play all these characters and change his voice. And I started at a young age playing around with my voice, finding out mm. all these new original characters and things I could do. Um, and uh, I think that got me thinking about it. And then when it came time to pick electives in middle school, I chose trumpet. And then my mom, and then I chose trumpet again. And my mom said, just, do something different. Learn learn something else. And I chose theater, and that's when the bug hit me. That was in middle school. Go mom for teaching variety. Yes, yeah. Mom and dad, I guess, get both, yeah. both get the credit. Well, I mean, you know some parents are like kids, you have to stick with it, but then there is that other sweet spot where it's good to try a few different things to figure mm -hmm. out what really sticks with you. Absolutely, yeah. And then what do you think for yourself? What was the draw of working on video games? I love video games. <laughs> I mean, that's my preferred medium for mm -hmm. sure, as far as entertainment goes. <coughs> um, I've always, I've, ever since I was a kid, just a huge fan of of, of everything, every type. I, I've always really enjoyed what it's capable of in terms of storytelling, in terms of gameplay, uh, in terms of just design in general. And it wasn't a career when I was a kid. You couldn't be a voice actor in a video game. There were barely any voices to begin with. Um, I happened to be at the right age when I graduated college and was ready to enter after 150 audiobooks that, oh, well, <laughs> they are looking for, for voice actors for things. What has been, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm like talking. I know, it's a sad story. <laughs> it's really sad. I know, sad. I'm sorry, guys. I like got a bad tickle <laughs> in my throat. It's funny that we're doing voice. Um, what was your favorite game to play as a kid growing up? <gasps> oh, that's tough. Oh man, I, there's okay, just okay. Top three. There's just so many. No, it's even worse. <laughs> First ones that come yeah. to mind in terms of cool stuff. I love Jetpack for DOS. That was a really cool one. It had mm. a level editor. It was really really fun. Um, it was just it was kind of your average jump man go around collect mm. gems mm -hmm. sort of game. But uh, man, me and my friend Ross would come up with our own levels that had stories. We'd write little novels about Ooh, them. It was really fun. That was great. And then in terms of like more mainstream stuff, I loved uh, Nintendo GameCube. Um, the Mario series was always a uh, dear friend of mine. Uh, even the, the ancillary stuff like Mario Kart, Mario Party, Super Smash Brothers. I, I, I don't know. Nintendo was, was where it was at. Oh, man, favorite game. And, and, and the Final Fantasy games for Game Boy. That, those were some of my first ever RPGs was Final Fantasy Legend. So now that, <clears throat> now that you're doing a voice for Final Fantasy, what is it like thinking back to your younger self who played that game? Like... I found a journal of mine when I was oh, moving, ooh. and it was called Final Fantasy, and it was written, I'd forgotten about this, but the plots in Final Fantasy games are usually pretty convoluted, and mm. I was a kid and I couldn't understand what was going on or remember mm. what I was mm -hmm. supposed to be doing, so I wrote a notebook that had all of the stuff that was going on. Oh, interesting. And so I could, I, I could go back and, and look at it. Nowadays, games have quest markers and objectives and a glossary so you uh, can go back yeah, in, in yeah. case you took a couple months off but back then if you were lost you had no idea Good where luck. to go yeah it was no really message hard. boards to communicate with people well you had to that was back when uh the dial-up you had to you had to <laughs> ask your parents to use the internet because otherwise the phone wouldn't work yes so yeah I, yeah i was a game faqs kid back in the day but um yeah that was uh, that was a, a notebook that i found and i it was an emotional moment for me going, oh, I, this has been around forever, mm -hmm. and now I get to be a part of it. It's still very unreal. Uh, even today, I woke up 
in my bed. Nothing was different. <laughs> it's, it, there's there's nothing out. There's yeah. some advertisements there, but other than that, it's this is going on in people's homes uh, ah, across sh- the, uh, sure. the country. So I um, I don't know what it's like. I'll have to answer that question a year from now. All right. Yeah. Would it be fun to go back to tell your younger self, be like, just wait. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then what what are some games you're playing right now that you're interested in? Mm. I'm playing Tyranny right now, okay. which is an incredible game made by Obsidian, the guys who made one of my favorite games, mm-hmm. Fallout New Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm in it. Uh, I, I worked on it last year, and it's so good. It's, it's a deep, lore-based RPG mm-hmm. that has just the most amazing writing that you can... You really can do anything. Hmm. In video games, you have choice, but it's like you kind of know Got where it. you're going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or it's like, oh, here's your two choices. Mm. With this, there's thousands of choices, and I really feel for the first time in a video game in a long time that I'm actually discovering things. Hmm. If I'm going, well, what if I do this? Ooh, well, they did come up with a contingency in case I made that choice. Hmm. It's really interesting. I love this game. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, I'm, I'm about halfway through, and I'm torn whether to finish it or start playing Final <laughs> Fantasy tonight. You're like, ah, ugh. Yeah, yeah. Decisions, decisions, right? Yeah. First world problems, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> now, um, with playing the games and hearing yourself on something you've worked on, is that, do you recognize, like, right away, like, oh, yeah, that's me? Or are you just like... Man, that dude. <laughs> I, it's weird. I, I always grew up mocking whoever was the voice in a video game. And I played the demo with uh, one of my friends last year. And we were still making fun of all the voice actors, even though it was me and, and my friends. <laughs> it was, um, it's just such a natural response to just parrot back the lines and make fun yeah. of everybody. I, I, because it's not my face, it is, I am still sort of disconnected. That it is sure. sort of like, no, it's just Noctis talking. And I can do a really good Noctis impression. That's really what it seems like to me. <laughs> Have you done it where you've shown a friend or family the game and not said it was you and just see if they, like, notice? Or is it... My family is so not into gaming okay. that if I were to show them something, they would go, why am I watching this first? Oh, okay. So it would be it would be tough for them to stay on long enough to even have that thought. Well, what about game trailers? That's a short way to show them something, right? What's weird about this game is there's never really been an English cinematic trailer for the for There's the game. some on YouTube. Uh, not uh, Are they not official then? Well, you they mean, may be not official. There I was are looking on English YouTube. trailers but not where the characters are talking and your their mouths are moving. Uh, there are got like it. voiceover trailers. Yes, that's true. There's yeah. a lot of those. Exactly. Uh, they never they've been out in Japanese where it's like mm. here's a scene from the game, yeah. but I have yet to see what a cutscene looks like. Mm. So it's a, it's a hard thing to oh, show yes. them okay, something and say like here's this character yeah. talking, I play that character. I can show them like Here's me narrating this thing, but <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have much meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you mentioned before doing animation. Now, you've done quite a lot of anime. How That's did correct. you get into yeah. doing anime, and what has that experience been like? I got into doing anime. Uh, Blue Exorcist was my first thing, and Where there you go. Your... Not bad. Thanks, I did the movie. You. I played uh, a couple of uh, ancillary characters, mm-hmm. and it came about because... My friend Mio, who I was friends with in college, when she she just she just came over from Japan. She spoke barely mm. any English, and we were friends. We worked on that Burn Krant Six Sixteen mm-hmm. TV show together. And about eight years had passed. I hadn't talked to her. I hadn't seen mm-hmm. her since school. And then she saw a picture of me and Logan, the director, on Facebook, and said, "Oh, you're a voice actor. Why don't you come in and do some voices for us?" Nice. And I was able to do an Ace Combat video game, and then they, they gave me that. And then mm-hmm. over the years, they've been able to trust me with more and more um, uh, heavy stuff. And that's it all It all started from a Facebook post. Really Sheesh. interesting. Well, I guess it all started from college, too. So Yes. There you go. Building blocks. Yeah, exactly. A couple things lining up together. Exactly. What has been your favorite anime to work on? One Punch Man was phenomenal. Okay. I played a character named Puri Puri Prisoner, who's eight feet tall, made of muscle, and very gay. And he <laughs> he uh, he like sort of transforms into 
uh, Puri Puri Angel Style, which is like <laughs> this amazing Sailor Moon esque transformation oh, where boy. wings come out and it's amazing. Uh, he's been really, really fun and, mm -hmm. a, and a lot of fun to talk about at cons and, uh, and stuff like that. And a, a lot of my friends are in the show too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, uh, you mentioned cons. Have you gone to many different conventions or um, get togethers? I saw you went to uh, the GameStop event recently for yeah, Final Fantasy. That's right. So what, what is it like going to conventions and it's, what's that world It's like? really awesome. I've only started doing it the last couple of months and only the last two I went to was I able to talk mm. about Noctis. Uh, mm -hmm. There were some, I, I went to one in Baltimore where I was supposed to, I thought I was gonna be able to talk about it by that point, but mm -hmm. it wasn't, the, they didn't release our names for another couple of weeks. Mm. So I was like, oh man, I was like signing things that were Final Fantasy, and or like seeing something and saying, "Can I sign that? Can I just sign that? Just, just in case." <laughs> um, really fun things like that. Uh, it's been, like I said before, it's a little bit unreal working in video games because it's not something that's mm. around in the ether. It's something that is at people's homes, mm -hmm. so you only get to know how your work has impacted others when you meet them in person mm. and that's what these conventions are for where you suddenly meet people and you realize oh this is what this means to mm. them those are so heartwarming and amazing when mm -hmm. they dress up as as characters you played or or make fan art for you I, it's just it's amazing i kind of want to do them all the time because they they make you feel so good well, you you know, there's a if you're in Los Angeles in uh, July, there's Anime Expo. There's, there's Anime Expo, so right? So many. I mean, there's plenty of others, but that's the one that I'm LA based, so that's why I was like, that's the one I always think of. Right? Yeah, I I have to be invited. Well, if you to just these started, yeah. so you know. Yeah, you yeah, we'll yeah. see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Have you dressed up as any of your characters? No. Maybe Wouldn't that be kind of meta, right? Yeah. Then you are the character and you are the voice. It's weird though because <laughs> I feel like if I if I did. Uh -huh. You would realize how different we look. Fair Noctis enough. Noctis is very, he's got the features. He's got the jawline and the brooding eyes. On, I'd need a lot contacts. of help. I'd need a lot of help with this <laughs> face. So maybe not Noctis, maybe uh, someone else who's uh, a you'd little less pretty. You'd have to shave, so. Yeah, I know. That'd be really tough. I look so young when I shave. It's really, really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. That's why I avoid it. You're like no baby face for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you could still like. Have you done it like a casual cosplay where it's more like inspired by what their outfit could be if it was like day to day clothes? Um, no, I haven't really. You That's a that? really good idea. Yeah, whereas where you wouldn't have to compare us side by side. Yeah. That's the important thing. Um, it just like somebody would recognize like, like hey, oh, that's like someone's outfit. put in some effort, yeah. yeah. I did tweet a picture. There was one I was recording DLC for Final Fantasy. Yeah. And they had the masks of, of our characters. Yes. You saw that on my Twitter, uh, and that's been very popular. So that's maybe if that's a taste of me cosplaying as Noctis, <laughs> then maybe I'll go full full throttle. Well, it's like the anime heads, you know. It's just a different thing. Same yeah. idea. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're kind of dressed up right now. You have your Final Fantasy shirt. Got the swag on. We're doing a GameStop premiere tonight oh, okay. uh, with Square Enix uh, at the West Hollywood location in... Um, Oh man, I don't know. On, uh, I just know it's on Santa Monica Boulevard, somewhere in West Hollywood, whatever GameStop that is. That, that's what Google's for, like type. Right yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and uh, I'm doing signings and stuff all mm -hmm. the way up until the midnight release. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna like get on meet the fans and be like, yeah, that, that's me. Finally, I can talk about it. It'll be really nice. <laughs> you you said you had a tweet where you were talking to some kids about like you did the voice, but they're kind of like disconnected. At a wedding, yes, it was funny. They well, it's they were connected they just didn't believe me for ah. whatever reason it was uh they were talking about final fantasy and i said oh, oh i know all about it i i play noctis and they were like no you don't who are you <laughs> i don't know what they expected me to look like an anime character or something like that but they wouldn't believe me uh even when i had them google it they were like no you're lying have you done his voice before that you could have done the voice and been like no, really, here's proof. The or... thing is, is that there's not a whole lot out there. Okay. So I could not do the yet. voice now, but a lot of people wouldn't recognize it as mm. like, oh, that's from that part where he's fighting the guy mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. That'll be a few months down the line when they go, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. Right. I think the only thing then online right now that you can find, which is a really cool video, was the uh, voices of where they kind of introduced you guys as the English cast. That was so freaking cool. And yeah, it's For great a video to... game company to mm -hmm. invest so much in the, in the, the voice acting side to to show us off was 
awesome. Mm-hmm. They did such a good job on those videos. I'm I'm very grateful to Square for doing those. Well, there you go. You can show that to your friends and family who don't play the game. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> that true. That has little clips of you doing the yes, voice. Yes, I should have done that. I should have done that. I should well, have you, you, s- you still can. It's on YouTube. Yeah. You can get it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, has there been a difference for you in doing animation, voice acting, audiobooks to video games? Like, is the process different? Mm-hmm. How you approach it different? What is A it lot like? of it has to do with the industry uh, okay. as a whole. So, like, video games, you don't get scripts ahead of time. Okay. Whereas animation, you do. So it's a mm. different in different terms of how you prepare. Hmm. Um, and then a lot of it is is in terms of the, the limitations of the medium as far as dubbing goes. Mm. Final Fantasy was all dubbed, and we didn't mm. usually listen to the Japanese reference just because we were localizing it to Western audiences, but mm-hmm. we did have to get the timing down to the millisecond. So we would always know, okay, here's your line. Uh, Japanese voice actor did it in 7.3 seconds. We need you to do it in at least uh, around mm. there. Um, so that's something that has to do a lot with anime work, mm-hmm. definitely, and uh, with Japanese video game work. And with American video game work, it's all also usually faster is better. You're hmm. not taking your time with these lines. It's grenade, and it's got to be really, really <laughs> fast. Um, in animation work, then you can really mm. let the scene uh, play out. And I haven't done a, a whole lot of that. I just started doing that this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's something that I, I really look forward to doing a lot more of. Have you done uh, dubbing on live action yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> now, is that harder than, because like that, you can very specifically see how someone's mouth moves versus yes. an anime where, and even a video game, their mouths move, but it's not so specific? Well, uh, Final Fantasy, they have the software now for video oh. games to do the lip flap for the language that you're playing in. Wow. So we did not have to actually worry about lip flap with Final Fantasy because if you select English voices, it'll play perfectly. Wow. It's really, really cool. That's cool. Yeah, technology. that's really cool. So with live action dubbing, it's, it never works. So basically you're just kind of doing the best job that you possibly can. You did it for a cartoon, right? Uh, live action. For a live action. So oh. we had to change it as we went. So I was going to ask you too, did you guys have an opportunity where you're in the booth and you try it and the sound is a different one from what the English would be? Oh, all and then the you time. get a rewrite in the process? All the time. Okay. Uh, for live action and especially for anime yeah. because we're really conscious of the lip flaps in anime. Okay, cool. Um, and that, it's a lot of our time. I would say like a third of the time spent in the booth is rewriting a line and redoing it just to just for lip flap for sure and then is it a relationship where you as the performer are allowed to voice what your suggestions yes, are of yeah like, all the hey, time wait. it's always a puzzle oh, and good. so we're, okay. we're it's very collaborative like well how the heck can we make this line work and <laughs> yeah. usually the directors have a lot of experience doing that and yeah. in terms of moving lines around so it makes sense um but uh but yeah if it's something since we know our characters specifically very yes. well, we can say like, well, he wouldn't say it like this. Maybe uh, it's, this okay. would be a better line for him. Yeah. That's usually when we can chime in. But yeah, yeah. good question. Yeah, because I, I have done an, so sorry, I answered your question correctly and incorrectly. I have done an animated, computer animated, and a live action. Mm. Which, because it's if they're an O sound and you're like, that's not what the word is in English. Yes. Like that one you can't get around. You're it's just like, really ah. tough. It's really yeah. tough to cheat those things because that's especially when you see how glaringly off it is when their characters move. Anime, thankfully, is usually this. Yeah. Now, not to get into the huge debate of sub versus dub, but do you find that in doing this, you kind of understand why they make some of those cho- choices for the dub because it doesn't fit with the time. It doesn't fit... Uh, per country and like regional dialect and information and even um, how the mouth moves. You're just yes. like, uh, no. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think a knee-jerk reaction is, um, well, they didn't translate it literally, but then someone with a little more mm-hmm. uh, wherewithal would, would realize, no, this fits a Western conception better than what mm-hmm. the Japanese line is. There's a lot in the Japanese language, I, I know, uh, quite a bit of Japanese, at least written Japanese. <gasps> and there's, I, <laughs> and there's a there's a lot that Japan does well. Mm-hmm. Their written language is extremely expressive. You've got mm-hmm. the kanji, you've got all this really interesting stuff. But in terms of the sound of the language, it doesn't really have as much as, mm. as English does. Um, so I think there's a whole lot 
there's a whole lot that can be done between the lines when you're localizing a game mm-hmm. or an anime. And when you look at the Square Enix localizers, these are the best of the best. They are the ones who they studied, they, they left everything to go to Japan and work on this game. Three people localized wow. the entirety of King's Glaive, the Final Fantasy movie, the game, mm-hmm. the 60 hour game, and the anime. Oof. All the way through, these are the guys who are the best of the best, cream of the crop. They know what they're doing. And so when they make a choice, mm-hmm. it's well thought out. Are they native English speakers or native Japanese speakers? Oh, they're all native Mixed. English speakers. Okay, native yeah, English. who okay. who learn Jap- Japanese mm-hmm. in high school or mm-hmm. middle school or whatever. They had the passion to work at mm. the game company and and sail all the way over there. They are awesome people, really, really awesome. Nice. And they know they know what the fans think about certain things, and they they realize that they're that they're always going to have a fan base that will mm-hmm. have opinions for sure. Well, it's good that they're in touch with what the fans are thinking and like Absolutely. their feedback. But and I mean, with social media now, it's such a quick call and response for yes. someone to be like, uh, "Excuse me, yes, this is a thing," yeah. and then they can see that. Yeah. Well, they are fans themselves. They are That's the biggest good. fans, which is which is very important. So now we're up to your big thing that comes out tomorrow, Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple pictures of your character, so let's take a look. So Noctis. Um, what's his full name? It's a longer thing. Noctis Lucis Kylum. Kind of a long name, you know? Yeah, like... definitely. Nobody <laughs> refers to him that within game. And I didn't even know. I thought it was Noctis Lucis Kalum. Okay. And then I, in my interview, I said uh, I said Kalum, and the localizer uh, emailed me saying, no, it's actually, it's actually Kylum. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, but that, but it, all, never, it never occurred. Well, yeah. Noctis never said his name in oh, game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And nobody else does either. As far as I know. It's just per the. Well, that's it just gives the it... lore. Yeah, it gives it depth. Yeah. So, yeah, nice. Uh, then we have one other photo, too, and I think the next one's like a, in, yeah. Sorry, this one's a bit dark, but it's kind of the in-game, like a pause. Yeah, He looks yeah. very dark and broody. He he looks that, but he isn't. Oh, okay. He's an interesting character. Noctis is very goofy, very, um, he's, he's a young man who's learning about the world. He has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, mm-hmm. and it manifests in a sort of emo way with the hair oh. and the attitude. <laughs> but that's yeah. him putting it on. Because okay. at heart, he's just a goofy kid. Yeah. And, uh, but, but he has all this responsibility, so there's this dichotomy between him mm. uh, finding himself, and that's what the game is about. And he's a prince. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who has no idea about the game, that's, yeah. kind of a, that's kind of a bigger thing about who he is, too. And so it's... There's things about him and his father, right, in the game. I, I watched some of the trailers. So. Yeah, that's that's huge. His mm-hmm. father is uh, Regis, mm-hmm. and his story is explored in Kingsglaive, the movie okay. that came out earlier this year, uh, and that tells the story of, of what, mm. what his father went through. And there's a, a lot of responsibility being this, this last bastion of hope mm. in this world that has been consumed by the evil Niflheim forces. Nice. Yeah. It's like more ha ha. Yeah, exactly. Dark evil stuff. Yeah, yeah, but it's up to you to save the day. That's Very why there's cool. a video game. So, um, not being f- terribly familiar with it, when a player is going to play this game, they're playing your character. Then yes, or they That's have right. options. Yes, uh, for the DLC, you'll be able to play as other characters, but for okay. the main game, you only play as Noctis. Cool. So, you're, what's it like to be the main character? It's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. Uh, there's. It's awesome playing an arc. I've played okay. a lot of supporting characters mm. where you just come in and you're the comic relief or mm-hmm. you're the bad guy and then this is what you do. Yeah. But to play someone in a JRPG means that your character is going to go through a lot mm. of changes. And playing that change was really, really w- mm. rewarding as an actor. Uh, being able to say, well, where in this story does this occur? Mm. What is he feeling? And that was cool. Other characters that you play, it's... Well, he's just being evil again, and that's what he does. Ah. This guy was, it really depended on where you were in the story that the performance changed. Now, did you uh, record it linearly, or did you have to jump around? For the most part, this was one of the better games in terms of recording linearly. Oh, we, nice. we really did it by chapter by chapter, and then as time went on and we had most of the game recorded, then we were jumping in at, okay. at parts. But this was a really good one where we got to go in order. Mm-hmm. Did you have to go back and ever revisit parts? Like, did you, the way this works, do they record it, send it, yes. and then like, hey, wait. We had the, another thing that's amazing about Square and this game mm. and the, I guess the, the hopes that they had, the, mm-hmm. the, the ability to work on it, was we were able to go back and fix oh, mistakes okay. where that's okay. not always a luxury you have. Mm. 
we were able to just do some sessions where it was, hey, we played the game. Mm. We didn't realize in this cut scene, we thought he was going to be really far apart from who he was talking to. But it turns out he's only a couple feet away, so <laughs> let's do it again, but yeah. more conversational. Mm. Well, that was amazing. That was so rewarding to go in and be able to fix that. Because mm -hmm. in the past or on a, on a lesser game, it would come out and you'd go, oh, that just looked bad. Mm. Bummer. This one, everything looks great. Then you wish you could go, like, can I, I have a... Yes, yeah, yeah exactly, okay. yeah. With this one, I, I'm really proud of the work we did and the ability to, to fix the mistakes. Nice. And then how long were each of the recording sessions? We did it in... Uh, Roughly. Yeah, four-hour sessions, your okay. standard video game mm -hmm. uh, recording session. Um, and we went very slowly, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. were able to we were able to really take our time and make sure it flowed. And mm -hmm. another cool thing that they did was after everyone had recorded, because we all did it in isolation, they would listen to the conversation back and make ah. sure that it sounded like we were talking to each other. And if it didn't, then we'd go and pick up those the next day. Uh, or with, oh, Robbie, it, it, when we recorded him, we thought this scene was about something else. Mm. Uh, now we realize it's about this. It's setting it up for this thing. So let's go back and redo his stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was awesome. So it really sounds like we're talking to each other. Did you ever get to actually meet those guys in real person in real life? Yeah, it took a while. I only met uh, there's four main characters, uh, and I only met two of them like about four months ago or oh, so. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and then and Robbie, who plays my best friend Prompto, I met uh, about a year ago mm. uh, when we had already been working on it for a year. So no, like after party right after where you guys are like, come on, bros, let's go hang out. We always talked about it, but it just <laughs> never happened. That's the thing with video games. It's mm. so when you're working on it, it's it's always in isolation and in, the, yeah. in these dark rooms that uh, in unlabeled buildings. Mm. So it's it's uh, <laughs> it's a different experience. So maybe later, maybe once we're done with the DLC, we'll we'll get together. There you go. Well, yeah, we've all never we've never all been in the same room. I don't think. Thing that's ever happened so at that some should point should be part of a launch or something like that yeah well it's hard uh the guy adam <laughs> adam crosdale who plays yeah. ignis the one with the glasses is yeah. uh, on camera he's always in a bunch of stuff so he's, okay. he's uh, right now he's in canada filming stuff mm. so he's really really hard to pin down well tell him to hurry up and like yes. get together <laughs> so you guys can do like a photo shoot of that'd it be all really perfect yeah yeah do they do anything like that like any sort of promo with you and like images with the character uh, to again promote I it? I, i'm so grateful to square because this was the first time that i think they really they really showed us first and foremost mm. the voice actors uh, and we did a whole there's one really cool picture where it's all of the CG characters and all of us next to each other. Nice. We all took photos like our CG counterparts, mm. and that was really cool. That was a fun thing, and uh, um, yeah, there's been there's been little things like that which have been really really nice. Nice. Now, uh, you've only you have you haven't been able to play the game yourself yet, right? Because it's like well, I also didn't want to. Okay. One thing was I was at that GameStop convention, and yeah. you could play it. But I was talking with Matt Kishimoto, mm -hmm. who's the um, the marketing mm -hmm. um, director, and we came to the agreement that like you could play it, but with it's an art when you're playing an RPG, it's your story. You're making the choices that determine the outcome of the game. You're mm -hmm. you're defeating this bad guy and mm -hmm. getting the treasure, and that is your save file. So mm -hmm. there's something about playing it prematurely where you can do this stuff, but then when you go back, you'll have to do it again, and maybe hmm. you're going to make a different decision. Um, so we're we're both waiting for uh, to be able to actually sit down and play it on our own machine. Have you gone back and replayed a game to get different outcomes? Oh yeah, Fallout New Vegas. I played okay. quite a few times. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's definitely a love of mine. Or or with um, you take an RPG like that and you do it with mm -hmm. different rules, like uh, do okay. a, try to go through the whole game only at level one, never level up. Um, okay, really interesting. Uh, ways to challenge yourself so yeah i do those for i sure. thought of doing that with the walking dead pc gameplay all aggro or all oh passive my gosh all the way so, through i could not play an all aggro you'd it'd be so Just heartbreaking be like, I'm always angry so heartbreaking <laughs> <laughs> so i think when i played i was a little more like it depended on the situation yeah, yeah. I like think a real person yeah, yeah yeah but yeah it'd be but really tough to play know. yeah you want to know what <laughs> what is it if uh, if lee yeah. is such a bad guy you play yeah. him as such a, a bad guy it'd be really interesting now, I think I heard you say, you said uh, for this game, for Final Fantasy uh, 15, it's 60 hours of gameplay? Well, oh, it's 60. all over the place. Oh, okay. uh, the official reviews are out, because I, I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. I haven't played it. 
but uh, a long time. You have a long time. Uh, you have a long time. <laughs> it's it's twenty hours of main storyline. Okay. And then about thirty five hours of Oof. side quests. And I don't. Of course, there's people who just play it all the way through. But I right. think almost everybody is going to get a lot of enjoyment out of playing these side quests. A lot of people have said mm-hmm. that the dungeons are the best parts of the mm-hmm. game. So I think a lot of a lot of people are going to get a way more than the 55 hours it's going to be. Mm. You're, once you beat the game, you then go back, and then there's these quests that unlock afterwards. So sure. I think there's going to be a lot of time. And then the DLCs. People are going to be mm-hmm. at their computers for a very long time. <laughs> the you... PS4 is not out for PC yet. Ah. Yeah. Are you a mainline story player, or do you like the side stories, or I'm back and forth? All about the side stories. Side yeah, stories? yeah. Okay. I try to get as much out of it as possible, for sure. Usually, and and in, in a lot of games, the mainline isn't as much fun mm. as these side stories. Um, I, I know Skyrim was that for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. spent so much time doing that, and then yeah. once I was level 100, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go and do the main quest. Fine, 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 whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was. Uh, with this game, the the main story is very emotional and. Okay. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that af- at a certain point they can't stop playing. They're like, oh my mm. gosh, this is, I'm too hooked. I have to follow this all the way through. Um, so uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, what it is for, for each person. Mm. Have you had to cry in your games before? Yeah, in this one there's, there's quite a bit of crying. It's very emotional. Mm-hmm. It's a very, there's crying, there's aggro, there's mm-hmm. nerves, there's, Noctis' emotions really run the gamut in this one. How do you get into those different moods, and how do you get out of them? Um, getting into it is usually music is is an interesting way. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. For sure, that really helps. There's uh, there's certain emotional pieces that I like. Tchaikovsky's mm-hmm. Symphony Number no. Six uh, mm-hmm. is a really good one for me. Um, there's and then getting out of it isn't so bad. I'm an actor, so it's it's fun for me to mm-hmm. get into that and then get out. It's like, all right, now we're back to doing this. Mm-hmm. So that's not as intense as it might seem. So you're not so moody after you've just been crying for a little while? No, no. Okay. I get to go, yes, I got paid to act. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I going way back, what was it like to get your first voice acting check? Like, what was that like? I <laughs> got paid to be a voice. That was really weird. That was a, an iPhone app that I did after six months of auditioning on mm-hmm. voice123.com. I, uh, I got a Russian iPhone app. Two people auditioned. Mm. I was one of them, and I booked it, and that was for $100. And I used that to buy a microphone that I then recorded the game mm. on. Um, so it was, it was really, really rewarding after so many times of being told no that, mm. yes, I did it. Even though only two people auditioned, I still got it. I still did it. That was a really nice feeling. What was it like telling your parents and family, like, I I do voices and I got paid for it? (laughs) It's always been confusing for them because they're not video game players nor anime watchers or anything like that. So it's always the question of what is this? What are you? (laughs) Are you this guy? Is that you doing that? They really like it when I'm the voice of Welch's. So Welch's, real grape goodness. It's always <laughs> those things are the ones that I love sharing with them that they yeah. can go like, I saw this on TV. Mm-hmm. My son's on TV. Those are those are their favorite things yeah. for sure. So you should just educate them on like how video games work. I know it's harder with parents of like, no video games. Let me tell you about this. It's yeah, you. yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think they know. I okay. uh, I, I texted them. Somebody uh, posted on uh, at uh, Times Square. There's all these Final Fantasy yeah. ads showing mm-hmm. and I, I i posted them a picture that somebody tweeted and then they said oh wow that's yeah. amazing so that's it's becoming real okay because even final fantasy like if even if you've never played that game it's been around so long yes that i bet most people have heard of it seen an image for it played it their friend played it Absolutely. saw the movie way back when or something i've never been able to say final fantasy and have anybody go what's that yeah. everybody knows what that is you know yeah. something you know at least something yeah yeah what was the? Did you start with the first Final Fantasy game actually when you first started playing it? Or? When I first started playing, I played Final Fantasy Legends one, two, okay. three, and Final Fantasy Adventure, which were not actually Final Fantasy games. Okay. Remember, I said there's mainline ones, mm-hmm. and then there's ones that are not. These are especially not because mm. these were like reskinned versions of another series <laughs> that they put okay. the Final Fantasy on to get it sell more. Uh-huh. Um, then I played seven when I was in high school and then I went back mm. once I started working on this game I went and played all of the mainline ones in order oh wow it was really really cool how to long do. did that take you it took two years <laughs> it was a very <laughs> long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, uh, they get very long okay were you playing like all day all the time or no too? that's the thing if I played it all day all the time it would take like it still take a few months <laughs> it's, they're very long um 
But uh, yeah, in between work and stuff. Or, it was like homework. Uh, it was homework, yeah. Right. But it was it was very enjoyable. There's certain ones of the series that I really liked, and some that were a chore. It took a long time. Favorite in the series, besides your own. Because, yes. I mean, come on. And yeah. that's also the newest, so, I mean, technology is at its best now. So, yeah. going back, what has been your favorite in the Final Fantasy series to play and yeah. least favorite? I really enjoyed Tactics. That was okay. a really good one. Um, but that's not in the main line. I really liked 8 and mm -hmm. 5 were two ones that I really enjoyed. Um, and I didn't like 9. It was really boring to me. Mm, Just okay. There's not a lot of character customization you can do. And yeah. I thought the music was terrible. So it was that <laughs> was a slog. That one took like six months to get mm. through because it was such a slog. Sure. Um, and the 13 series, which just, that was the one mm -hmm. right before 15 because 14 was an MMORPG, so it mm. kind of doesn't count. People don't really okay. compare it. Um, but that one was also really hard. Each game was about 50 or 60 hours and there were three of them mm. so that one took a long time to get through and mm. and i just felt the stakes weren't high in that one at all because mm -hmm. characters would die and then come back and you'd go whoa oh, i don't weird. care well, yeah is there anything at stake i don't even know mm. so that one was a really hard one to get through too because of the story now with final fantasy 15 and you've done the voices for your character how mm -hmm. much of the story do you actually know because that's the thing i don't know oh, okay. i can't wait to play it because i only know i know the whole story at least for noctis which is the whole story but then there's i'm sure there's tons of stuff where mm -hmm. he's not there there's other characters mm -hmm. talking about him or what's going on and i know nothing about mm. those i do know the outcomes but i don't know what precipitates a lot of hmm. these things okay. so there's a lot that i'm missing mm. and there's a lot because a lot of the game is told through while you're while you're traipsing around the countryside, mm -hmm. your friends are talking and saying stuff, and you're usually silent during those. So uh. there's a lot of funny stuff that's going on that I don't know about. Um, I've seen a lot of gameplay stuff where I'm going, oh, that's a whole conversation. I had no idea. Hmm. Um, so those I'm really interested to uh, see. Is it ever weird to do a line of dialogue that's in a response or prompt someone else, but you don't get to hear that other part? We so did. Then... That was one good thing. Okay. So for this one, a lot of times you don't. For sure, but in this one they made. That's why we went so slowly. They, we always had if we had someone else's line, we would get to hear it oh, before good. we okay. did it. So we uh, we always knew at least the context of what we were talking about. Not every game is like that, hmm. but for for Final Fantasy 15, absolutely yes, mm. yeah. Yeah, because I could imagine, like, you're saying a joke or responding to a comment or something and not hearing what prompt it is, like yes. you're talking into empty space. Exactly, and that's really hard, and it yeah. stinks when the finished product comes out and you go, oh, it does not sound like we recorded this mm. at the same time. This is, we're talking past each other. Yeah. This one, it sounds like we're in the same room at the same time. It's awesome. Now, if you don't have access to that, are there any tips to people out there who are, you know, trying to get a voice acting of, like, how do you deliver a line of dialogue? I mean, ideally, your director helps you as well in the scene, too. Yeah. And your engineer. But how how do you approach that so that you sound genuine and authentic? It's, it's you kind of have to do a lot of detective work okay. on your own, for mm. sure, to know... A lot of times these games are released in Japan beforehand, so mm -hmm. at least you can see, like, all right, I can see a gameplay video of what mm -hmm. goes on, mm -hmm. so I can see what this scene is about. Mm. Um, a lot of times the director won't know what this scene is about because mm. um, they just got the script that morning, yeah. too. So I would say that the most important thing is to, is to really do your homework. And when you're there in the booth, a lot of times the client is there or the localizer or mm. someone from the company and they usually don't know when to tell you stuff so you're always you're always asking them questions what is this what uh, mm -hmm. where does this happen does this they're not actors they usually don't work with actors so they don't know that knowing where something's going to go is usually really helpful hmm. in doing a scene like how important is this scene is this something that's foreshadowing and then they'll go like mm. oh yeah it is uh, of course but they wouldn't think to tell you that right off the bat is it generally a safe environment when you're in the booth to be able to ask those kind of questions and they yeah. encourage it or is it ever like can I ask a it it depends. Yeah, okay. it it definitely depends. Uh, I I worked on Fallout, and that was definitely a no questions about mm, anything. Okay. Um, but then for and then on the other end of the spectrum, you got Final Fantasy XV, where they were really forthcoming with stuff and mm. always told me stuff in advance. So it's all over the map, and you kind of have to gauge the temperature of the room for mm. sure. That's a good point. Yeah. And I, I had meant to ask you, um, are there any similarities or? What do you have in common with Noctis, your character? <laughs> That's a, it's such an interesting question. Um, I I feel like our goofiness is always apparent. Okay. We're we're both pretty goofy guys, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm thankful that I don't have as much pressure on me as this guy does. Well, he has to lead an entire kingdom in a war at age twenty. 
I uh, just had to choose what electives I was going to take at school. That's all I had to do. Um, so there's uh, there's a bit we have in common and a, a lot that he's like he's way ahead of me in terms mm-hmm. of uh, in terms of personal growth for sure. When you came to find his voice for that character, were you guided by any description ahead of time, or did you take what you knew about it and brought something? That was an interesting one. I didn't recognize the character when it came out, when okay. uh, we were auditioning. I, I wasn't following the development of Final Fantasy at that point. So I just auditioned as if it was anything. Mm, and okay. I heard that a lot of people who auditioned for the role had a preconceived notion mm. of what this archetype sounds like. And they did their best Sasuke impression because uh, they said, oh, it's just going to be like that. Mm-hmm. But since I was coming from it from a totally new angle and I hadn't done any dubbing at that point, I hadn't worked mm. in, in, in really anything uh, two years ago, I kind of just listened to the reference they had, which was they wanted like Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne was the idea. From that was a, They had a little reference video. They said like... You've got that royalty stuff going on. You've got the, mm. that richness. He comes mm-hmm. from good stock, um, but uh, a little rough around the edges, kind of mm. like a rock star. And so I worked on that audition for a very long time, and I think that's what that's where I came up with that. Um, and then the demo came out, and then we retooled the voice mm. after feedback and uh, from what the game director wanted. And so we went through a redoing of the voice. We re-recorded all the lines oh, okay. that we had already done before. And that was a that was a very long process too, um, but uh, but something that I'm really proud of at the end. Mm. Now, was it, is he a voice that's easy to slip into, or um... yes, definitely. He's 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 one of the best. And what's also cool is he doesn't yell that much. Oh. So a lot of my <laughs> sessions were just kind of sounding like this. It was really really nice. Uh, well, speaking of having to yell, how do you take care of that? And what are any other advice you'd have for any aspiring voice actors out there? The hardest part is scheduling, for sure. Because for, for me, I do a lot of commercial work and mm-hmm. uh, the and balancing audiobook work mm-hmm. and promo work with the screaming video game and animation sessions. Mm. It's, it's try to do those at the end of the session if you can and if you can schedule those for the end of the day or for a Friday so mm-hmm. you have two days to recover. Because that is, it can be absolutely brutal and you you go from doing call of duty to doing welch's grape juice and you just sound you just can't do your job so yeah. it's uh that that's something that always be mindful of scheduling and always ask if you can do if you know it's going to be vocally stressful try to do it on a friday mm. if you can yeah <laughs> and um what what other projects i mean final fantasy 15 is a huge thing coming mm-hmm. out tomorrow How yeah exciting. so guys you can well is it midnight like they can go to the store at midnight and get it yeah i mean okay. I, i'm, midnight, I'm well, they, midnight they, releases, they have me yeah. coming in at 7 30 tonight Oof. so i don't know what's gonna happen for five hours but uh they're should just be gonna good. hold it We're just gonna in hold front it. of people and be like ha <laughs> you can't have it yet maybe uh, i'll try to slip one in my pocket too yeah, you're slick. um the that's coming out, and then the next cool thing is uh, uh, my first animation ga- uh, gig, which was uh, Justice League Dark, Ooh. which is a movie uh, that comes out January 24th, I think, digitally, mm-hmm. uh, that we made with DC, and uh, that's really cool. I play Jason Blood, who's a knight of Camelot, and he's fused with the demon Ansrigan, and I play both <laughs> of those guys. So there's... Uh, that was a really cool showcase that I got to yeah. do for my first ever animation gig. I nice. cannot wait to see how that came out. Is it ever hard to keep track of different voices? Well, you have you do each one separately when you record, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, okay. it's I uh, no, not at all, because oh, you spend okay. so much time with a character that you really mm. get to know okay. what they sound like. And yeah, there's definitely people that sound similar. They're different. Mm. That, that's mm-hmm. that are uh, in same parts of my register, but. The, the intention and the cadence behind them always changes. Gotcha. So that's, that's how I'm able to differentiate them for sure. If you have a recording, you go away and you come back to it, is it ever hard to be like, find what it was exactly you did last time? That can be, if it's a very small character, yes, okay. absolutely. And uh, I'm sure that there are some, especially in anime out there, if you played it back to back from season one <laughs> to season three, it's like, oh, that wasn't quite the same. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that can be hard. But if it's a major character, I'm never going to lose Noct. He's here. I know what he sounds like. So um, yeah, for for because you spend so much time in their shoes, yeah, mm-hmm. that one's, those are easy to, to slip back into. People don't really quite know that you're this character yet. 
sort of. Um, I was going to ask, pr I wonder if anybody's going to ask you to do like, can you record my voicemail or something for me? That happens voice? all or the time. Happen? No, all right, nice. yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> bread and butter of conventions for sure. Yeah. It's a lot of like, uh, yeah, can you call my, and the last one I called uh, a fan's mom. Uh, and she was really nice. <laughs> that was in Florida. Um, they, and, uh, and then she didn't answer, and then we waited an hour, and then then we got a hold of her, oh, and that okay. was really fun. <laughs> what was that voice that the what that was the Noctis. attendee wanted? Oh, yeah, they wanted that, that. That was Noctis. Yeah, yeah. What they want you to say? Oh, to just her. to say, just to say anything, and I decided to say. Um, Hi, as uh, this is Scully's mom. Uh, listen, here's the deal. Uh, your daughter's gonna be playing my game instead of doing homework for the next couple of weeks so <laughs> try to steer her on the right track okay that was all i said <laughs> that's fun and cute. yeah yeah well that's like um there's those uh audio shows and they do like the you win so and so's uh voice on your ants machine so that's yeah, fun yeah. that you do that and hopefully i can do a gps at some point that'd be uh, really fun <laughs> that's something you want to do gps is next i guess yeah what other voice options are there you've done quite a few of them so yeah I guess you can do those GPS. And, and i hope Ooh, that... a phone you could do like phone um instructions like the next siri oh my gosh <laughs> i've heard those are really hard i had a friend yeah. who, who played an appliance Mm. And you'd go in for a year, and you just say random sentences, <sighs> and then they part. They take all that data and then oh. make a voice out of it. So oh. it's just you do six hours a day for a year, and it's not like an audiobook. At least you're telling a story, but this is just yeah. random sentences. Yeah, it's hard work. I don't quite recall if you said, but um, how long from start to finish did it take to record the Final Fantasy? 15? This what for the English cast two years. I just found out the Japanese cast has been working on it for six and a half years, Ooh. which is insane. So they must They're be like only a lot two. Of fun. <laughs> yeah, only two years. <laughs> Have you met or been able to meet your uh, Japanese voice? Not yet. Oh, I'm okay. sure our paths will cross one okay. of these days, and that would be really nice. The um, internet, send an email or Twitter, reach out. I mean, you might have a language barrier depending on if they speak English or not. But yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, it would be it would be really really amazing. That would be a lot of fun to do. I don't think he has a Twitter or anything oh, like that. Okay. Um, he's a rock star too. He like oh, plays in nice. a band and stuff like that. So uh, that'd, that'd be, be really like cool. super fan excitement of having the two voices like. You call him or yeah. something and like, hey, I'm Noctis. And then he responds. Like, It'd be What's really, up? really What's up, cool. <laughs> What's up, Noctis? I'm the Noctis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's also a French and a, a Spanish oh, one, I think, fun. and a German one. Uh, I don't know who they are, but I'm sure it'd be really cool if you got all of us in a yes. room together. Oh, yeah. it's like the Frozen thing where they sang the song in all the different languages so they yeah. could go and do the Noctis lines in all the different languages. That'd be really cool. There you go, fans out there who really like the game. Once it comes out and we put clips on YouTube, just find the other language clips yeah. and do a montage. Yeah, and do a compare. That'd be Noctis, cool. Noctis in like multi-languages. Yeah, that'd be That's really exciting. interesting to see how different the performances are. Yeah, well, because it's different in different languages. So yeah. For sure. Uh, anything else you would like to add? No, I'm I'm excited, guys. This is a really exciting time. I I never thought this day would come. I had a countdown mm. app that started oh. like day 200 away, 200 days <laughs> yeah. away. Then there was delayed by two months, and then it was mm. oh, it's never gonna come out. And now it actually is happening. It's mm. already out in Japan, around the world. Australia has it, and soon. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll be the last ones to have it. No, I yeah. guess Hawaii will probably be the last yeah. ones to finally get their hands on it. Nice. Um, so I, 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 this, this is a day that uh, I never thought would come, and I'm really excited that it did. Nice. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you online and keep up to date with your posts about the game? Uh, just at Ray Chase, at Ray Chase on Twitter. Uh, oh, that's nice and nice easy. Nice and easy. Um, and uh, that's, the, that's the best way. That's so exciting. And then they can see, there's another video, and they can see your cute little dog, Milo. Milo! I'm so excited to enjoy the game with him. Now, is that from Milo and Otis at all? No, it's from the Phantom Toll Booth, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had a Milo cat, and I had an Otisina, so that's why oh, I had to ask. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we get that all the time, but no, he, he's... Uh, He's uh, more a literature guy than movies, I guess. Well, then that's fun little literature reference. Yeah, you, yeah. Like, it's your nerd radar of like, yeah. how much do you get this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, cool. Well, guys, make sure to check out Final Fantasy 15, which comes out tomorrow, uh, Friday the 29th, right? Mm -hmm. Today's the 20th? Yeah, that. Yeah, midnight tonight. And yeah. um, follow Ray Chase on Twitter so you can find out uh, more about the event tonight mm -hmm. at uh, GameStop over in Hollywood if you're in yeah. uh, the LA area. Uh, otherwise, you guys can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. And uh, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, five stars, iTunes, and uh, subscribe to After Buzz so you can be up to date on all these awesome interviews that we do here and all our expansive after shows as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. 
Views expressed here are those of the host only, not necessarily Maria the views of Kevin Afterbuzz Undergaro, TV or the owners or Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.